a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're both wrong. Hey, you're using too big a bat. This is a Pete Rose bat. I weigh 200 pounds. This bat's too big for you and too big for you, too. You got to get a bat that feels comfortable to you. That's one of the things about hitting a baseball. You know, some of us use a long bat, some of us use a big barrel, some of us use a knobless bat, some got a knob on it. Some are white bats, some are black bats, some are brown bats, some are light bats, some use heavy bats. It's all different uh, kind of bats. That's what makes a good hitter. You want me to tell you some things that I learned about baseball? Yes, 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 yes. Well, it's not the only way to play, but it's my way. You know, I've been able to get the most hits in baseball. And I also made the most outs. And because of the great players I've played with and great teams I've been on, I've been able to win the most games. But every game has been fun. And winning, hustle, and fun is baseball the Pete Rose way. It's very important that when you get in the batter's box to prepare to hit a baseball, you're fearless. You can't be scared of getting hit with the ball. Uh, if you're scared of getting hit with the ball, if you're back on your heels and a scout's watching in the stands, he's going to put a big X down by your name. It means you have no chance of ever becoming a baseball player. So don't be scared of getting hit with the ball. Look at it like this. If you get hit with the ball, you get to go to first base. That makes it faster to get around the home and score a run. So we're not scared. We're in the batter's box. Now, the next thing, we got to get a stance that feels comfortable to us. Don't try to copy my stance or don't co copy George Brett's stance or Wade Boggs' stance or Mike Schmidt's stance. Get the stance that's comfortable to you. I just happen to have a stance that's pretty well spread out because I hit off my back foot. And don't worry about how you stand or how you look because uh, I've seen hitters stand like this. They don't hit from there. I've seen hitters stand like this. Willie Mays used to stand like this. You know, Bobby Tolan, who's retired now, he used to stand like this, but he didn't hit from there. See, we all stand differently, but we all hit the same place, the same way. And what I mean by that, a guy might stand like this, but he don't hit from here. But if he did, it'd be nothing but a ground ball, because he'd go like this, right? And if a guy stood down here, he wouldn't hit from here, because if he swung at the ball, it'd be a fly ball. He'd hit like this. So we all hit right from here. That's where you hit from, right here. That's, I'm not going to hit you. You hit right from here regardless of where you stand. See, so if you can come up with a stance where you're comfortable and your hands are pretty close to where you hit from, it's going to be a big benefit. It's really going to help you. It's really going to help you. Understand what I'm saying? Because, see, I stand just like this, and I hit right from here. So I have, I have all this hitching I don't do. If you're comfortable like this, go ahead and hit like that. Or if you're comfortable like this, go ahead and hit like this. Uh, my personal stance, and the one that's comfortable with me, is right here like this. And I don't hit the ball on a plate. See, if I'm standing right here like this, and I hit the ball, it's over the plate. I should hit the ball when his back arm becomes straight. Now watch. If I hit it over the plate, that's a foul ball. See the angle of the bat? That ball is going to go back there. So you hit the ball out in front of the plate. Now watch. And look where that bat is. That's where I hit the ball. Look at that. It's eight inches out in front of the plate. You have to hit the ball out in front in order to hit a fair ball. Any questions on that? Simple. Everybody's got that. Let's just take it from step one. We're, we're fearless in this batter's box. This batter's box is ours. The pitcher's mound is the pitcher's. Don't worry if he pitches inside. Don't worry if he pitches outside. Next, we got a comfortable stance. It's just like what I told you earlier about sleeping. Some of us sleep standing up. Some of us sleep, horses sleep standing up. Some of us sleep on our belly, some on our backs, some on our sides. Some of our grandmas sleep in a chair. Why? Because they're comfortable. You have to be in this batter's box, and you have to be thinking about one thing, and that's that ball coming from the pitcher. You can't be worrying about this. You can't be worrying about this or this. You got to worry about the guy throwing the ball. Now, the way I hit, and I recommend it, but you got to remember one thing. Now, this is my way. I'm not a home run hitter, although I have hit a lot of home runs, but I'm not a power hitter to speak. I mean, I'm not your guy that's going to hit fourth or fifth. I'm going to hit first or second in the lineup. I use the whole field. I, hit, I get many, many base hits to left field, center field, and right field, and I'm a switch hitter. But my philosophy on hitting is every time I'm anticipating a pitch, I'm looking for a fastball. Or 99 out of 100 times, the guy's hardest pitch. And 99 out of 100 times, a fastball is a guy's hardest pitch. Now, why? Because if I'm up here like this, 
and I'm looking for a fastball, he can throw anything else that he's got, and I can adjust to it. Now, if I'm up here like this, and I'm looking for his curveball, and he throws a fastball, I don't have time to react. The catcher will catch the ball before I even start to swing at it. Or if he throws a slider, uh, if I'm thinking about a slider, if I'm thinking about a changeup, and he throws a fastball. So if you're gonna, if you're gonna hit like me, you gotta try to look for a fastball. See, most of your home, you're probably a home run hitter, right? You're probably a home run hitter, right? Oh, you just hit the ball everywhere. You, you, you probably hit like me. You get a lot of base hits, don't you? Bobby, you're probably a home run hitter. Well, home run hitters, what they do a lot, first of all, they hit a lot of home runs. Secondly, they knock in a lot of runs. Thirdly, they strike out a lot. And fourthly, they, they get hit a lot. Because a lot of your home run hitters are guest hitters. And when we start talking about being a guest hitter, what that means is a home run hitter like Mike Schmidt or somebody might like go up to the plate and he might say to himself, now this guy's gonna throw me a curveball inside. And he's gonna look for that curveball inside. Now if he happens to throw a fastball inside, he's gonna get hit with it. But if he throws that curveball inside, he's gonna hit the ball out of the ballpark. That's what you call guest hitting. Looking for a certain pitcher, looking in a certain area. In Little League, is it good to be a guest hitter? Well, uh, I don't know. I've seen, I've seen some Little League pitchers that can throw curveballs and change-ups. I think it's just important uh, uh, to get used to doing it at an early age. Then the more you progress, the better you are. Uh, I've seen curveball pitchers at 10, 11, 12 years old. I don't recommend it, but there's going to be guys who throw change-ups. Uh, I recommend teaching a kid how to throw a change-up at an early age more so than a curveball or a slider because he won't hurt his arm throwing a change-up because it's the same motion as a fastball. Uh, there again, you got to do some homework. Dalton, you got to watch the guy warm up. You know, because it's really, I think it's harder to hit in Little League Baseball than it is in Big League Baseball. Because I see the same pitchers year in and year out, day in and day out. You may, you may face a pitcher on Saturday in your Little League game, and that'd be the only time you see him in your life, unless you play him in a championship game. So you have to watch him warm up. And you know, if a pitcher's down there warming up and he goes like that, he's gonna throw a curveball. Or if he goes like that, he's gonna throw a fastball. Or if he goes like this, he's gonna throw a changeup. Or if he goes like that, he's gonna throw a slider. So you can watch a pitcher wind up, and you can tell what different pitches he has just by watching him warm up. It's all part of doing homework to be a successful hitter to help your team win the game. If, if we got these bats in our hand, which we have in our hand right now, we're gonna talk about hitting. And if we got our gloves in our hand, which we're gonna talk about later on, we're gonna talk about fielding. There's two phases to the game of baseball, one offensively and two defensively. And when you got this bat in your hand, you can't be worrying about missing a ball that you missed two innings ago. Or you can't be worrying about the ball being hit to you two innings from now. You have to worry about helping your ball club right now because you got the bat in your hand. Okay, Dalton, let me see your stance. Let me see you take a couple swings and see what kind of stance you got. Well, you're pretty, now you're pretty far away from the plate. You're pretty far away from the plate now, so just get a little closer to the plate. That's a pretty good stance now because you got your hands right about where we want them, right about where you hit from. Now, let's see you swing. Well, and I think you swung a little bit too hard there because uh, if, you, if ever you swing and miss at a ball and you almost fall down, you're swinging too hard. Because what happens if you took the same swing and you hit the ball and you almost fell down? You can't run to first base. So try to keep it short and quick. You know, that's a very important word when you talk about hitting. Bobby, Kelly, Derek, it's very important, Shannon, because we don't want to swing hard. Everyone thinks that in order to hit the ball far, you got to swing hard. We want to be quick with our swing. The quicker the swing, the better the, the, the swing, not the harder the swing. Don't ever any of us swing where we, if we miss the ball, we fall down. That's the wrong way of swinging a bat. Everyone understand that? Yes. Because you, you, you stop all your momentum, you lose all your quickness. It's just like, it's like hitting a golf ball. The guys with the real short, quick swings are the ones that hit the ball far. So don't worry about how hard you swing. Worry about how quick you swing. Now let's see, let's, let's, let's cut down that swing a little bit and let's be a, more, a little more quicker and let's hit the ball out in front. Let's see a swing. A little harder. Come on, let's put something into it. Go get it. Harder, harder than that. Watch that ball. Hey, get, hey, stand right back here where I am. Look, here's the way you're swinging. Look, you're going like this. Grint them teeth a little bit. Just boom. Just like, you hear my bat make that noise? I'm not going to hit you. I got good bat control. Listen to the bat. Hear that bat? Look at that swing. Let's see you do that now. Put something into it. Put something into that swing. Go get that ball. Get it. That's better. That's better. All right, one more. OK, one more. Get, go get it. Watch that ball. Hit that ball right out front. OK, let's see Kelly do something. Go back over there. Come on, let's see your stance first, Kelly. Let's see your stance. Wait, get that ponytail out of the way now so you can see the ball. OK, let's see your stance. 
All right, you got your hands. Wait a minute now. I want you to just try spreading out just a little bit your feet. That, does that feel comfortable? OK, let's see you swing now. OK, see, you almost fell down. Stay off your heels. Now, you got to take a step. You have to take a little step. I don't care if it's a big step or a little step, but you have to take a step with this foot. That's better. See, come over here, man. Let me explain something to you. And watch. And watch what happens if you don't take. Watch how awkward this looks with no step. See, that's the way you swung. See, you have no momentum going forward, no power. Now, if you take a short step, see, it looks, see how that looks? Like you're going forward to hit the ball. My hands are going forward. I'm going back, getting ready to hit. Just like that. Watch my feet. Don't watch nothing of my feet. These are my feet. OK, watch my pretty red shoes. Watch. Now, let's see you do that. Just try to get your step in coordination with your swing. And just watch the ball right out. You're going to try to hit the ball right out here. Go ahead. Perfect. That's it. One more. Stay balanced now. Hit that ball. All right, good. Now you hit like Mel Ott. You cocked your foot up like that. That's good. Let's see you do one, Derek. I'm going to see your stance first. Now, see, boy, you're really going to have to work at it. That's a good stance, but you're really going to have to be quick when the pitcher starts. Wait a minute. When the pitcher starts trying to throw that fastball in here because you got your hands up high. But that's OK, because I bet you can hit. Let's see, let's, let's see your stance. All right, let's see your swing. Good. One more. See, he takes a little bit bigger step than I do. But see how wide he is? That's good. See, he's well balanced. His, his stance is well balanced. See, he just, where are we going? That's only strike two. You get three strikes in this game. Wait a minute, let me look at your stance. Stay on those balls of the feet now. Don't get on the heels, all right? Go get it. All right, that's good. See, he's staying right over here. I'm talking to you a minute. See, I like that stance. He stands a little bit um, like George Brett. He's back like this. He's, he's wide, and Wade Boggs, they hit off their back foot. And guys that hit off their back foot are always good change-up hitters, because they don't get lunge it out on the front foot. They don't get fooled. See, he's spread out. Now, if he was like this and took that big step, he had to really be watching out for the off-speed pitches. But he's spread out like this. He's got his hands like this. That's OK. He's comfortable that way. You know, I, I can't, I'm not comfortable that way, so I can't stand that way. But you see how quick he was with his hands? Watch, it, watch my hands. That's where his hands were, real quick. Now, if he was real slow, he'd be, he'd be hitting the ball back like this. He'd be going back over here. That's good, going back over there. Good swing. OK, Derek, that was good. Tell him to see you take a couple swings. Come right over here. Get, get in that batter's box now. Hit your plate, get your plate. All right, get your stance. Let me see your stance. All right, here, look at the pitcher. All right, now let's see you swing. All right, that's a good swing. Now, first of all, I'm going to bring something to your attention when I said earlier. See how he's choking up on the bat? That's good, because he's comfortable that way. He is comfortable that way. And instead of getting up there and showing us how he's going to swing from being down at the end of the bat, where the bat would feel too heavy for him, he choked up on the bat. That's a smart adjustment that he made. It's no, it's no sin or no disgrace to choke up on the bat, because a lot of guys don't want that knob land in their hand. It don't feel comfortable to them. I choke up. When I hit, I choke up, because it gives me better bat speed, and it just gives me a better balance uh, of swinging the bat. Now, one, let's see one more swing. Let's get your hands back. Now, look at the pitcher. Look at the pitcher. Look at that ball. Hey, the pitcher's right out there. He's not down here. You're going to try to hit the ball out here. All right, now here it comes. Let's see you take a swing. Hit it hard. That's a good swing. See how solid he is? He's ready to run. He had a good follow through. His foot uh, is just right. He's not on his heels. He's on the balls of his feet. That's a good swing. One more time. Let's see you hit one. Hit this one all the way back to Japan. I bet you can hit that far. Well, it went to Manila. We'll have to stop there. We'll go to Japan tomorrow. That's a good swing. You're going to be a good hitter someday. Just keep practicing. OK, any other questions? OK, we talked about hitting. Now I'm going to hit a few for you. So I want you all back up now. Give me some room. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a couple swings. I'm going to show you how I try to hit the ball. I'm not trying to hit the ball far. I'm trying to hit the ball hard. I'm trying to be quick with my swing. I'm not going to try to over-muscle the ball. So I want you all to step back and just watch. Watch in here. Watch how quick I am. See how quick the swing was? There's a line drive. Now, if I want to hit a fly ball, hit it like this. Base hit. Right by the third baseman. Ah! 
Bad pitch. Base hit. <clears throat> One more. Base hit. Ball is outside. Throw it inside. That was some right-handed swings. Now I'm going to take some left-handed swings and try to show you how to hit the ball to the opposite field, left-handed. Throw it outside. Outside. Right out there. There it was. One more like that. That was a good one. That was a good one. OK, I showed you people how to hit the ball hard. Now you show me. Kelly, why don't you take a couple of swings? Back up the rest of you. Let's put this batting helmet on first. Very important. Now we're not trying to see how far you can hit it, how hard you can hit it. Watch the ball and be quick. OK, let's go. Watch the ball now. That's it. Good stand. Watch the ball now. That's a good swing, though. Watch the ball. You got to watch that ball. Yeah, that's a base hit. Good. Watch the ball. Hit that ball hard. That's it. Watch that ball. Look at that one. Hit the bag. That's a home run. All right, two more. Let's see you hit that ball hard. Hit it hard. Yeah. See, hit them line drives. One more. You got to quit on a good one now. Yeah, that's three good ones. Perfect. Good. Give me your hat. OK, Kelly, because of the wonderful world of slow motion and instant replay, we're going to now be able to watch you improve as a hitter in the course of four or five swings. You remember the first swing you took when you didn't move your feet, and all of a sudden we start working with your feet, and in the next three or four, you hit line drives to left field? It's wonderful how the adjustments you made in that short of a time. And as you can see, you're having a good swing now, and you're hitting the ball right on the nose. You're stepping forward. Your momentum's going right. Your eyes are on the ball. And the first couple swings you took, uh, you didn't even move forward. You just stayed stationary, and you were all tied up. But uh, because of you being able to see yourself right now, you got to be a much better hitter. Come on out of here. Hustle. Hustle. Let's go. It's fun to get in this batter's box. Come on, get, get your stance. Get the hat on. Come on, hustle. Let's go. Wasting time. Here, come on. Get this hat on. Let's go. You see now? OK, don't stand on the plate now. Watch the ball. Move up a little bit. Watch the ball. Watch the ball. Atta boy. Move up, Nick. Watch that ball. All right. That's all right. Watch the ball. Move up, Nick. Move up. All right, watch that ball. Hit that ball hard. Get it. Atta boy. One more. Get that bat back a little more. Get that bat back. Atta boy. Here. One more. Get a base hit. Hit hard. Hit. All right, one more. Got to, need a base hit now. I got a man on second, two outs. Got to win this game. Ah, one more. Throw it down, Nick. Come on. Get your hands back. Get your hands back, Tech. Get your hands back. Hit it. Atta boy. Good job. Give me five. Give me five. Okay, that's, that's a bat. Give me five. All right, get some change. Get some change. <laughs> you don't want to give me no five. <laughs> you got to give me five to get change. The next phase we're going to talk about is bunting. And there are so many games won and lost every year because of guys cannot execute the sacrifice bunt. I think an important thing about sacrifice bunting is where the bat is from the time you, the ball approaches you. The bat should always be right here at the top of the strike zone. And the reason for this is anything above that should be a ball. And if it isn't, you got a bad umpire back there. Everybody understand that? It's not down here. It's not here. It's right up here, because it's always easier to bend your legs and bunt the ball. And you hold it back real loose, because you're trying to deaden the ball. Hit that bat right here. Easy. Not with your hand. Just hit it. See how, ball, see how the bat go back in my hands? I said, I'm trying to deaden it. If I was trying to bunt the ball hard, I, I'd hold it hard. You could see the, the muscles in my arms flex, because I'm holding it hard. But I'm trying to deaden the ball. This is a, when, you're, when you're sacrifice bunting, this bat is a lot like a boat oar. I'm standing like this, and I'm just right field, first baseline, back to the pitcher, third baseline. I'm watching the ball. Everybody got the bat position? It's not like this. It's not like this. It's like this. 
and anything above this bat right here where you're going to hit the ball, the surface, should be a ball. Now, if it's down here, you can't come up like this because you'll either foul it off or you'll miss it or be a pop-up. It's simple. It's very simple. Your bat's right here at the top of the strike zone. Okay, we have the position of the bat. We know there are two different positions of the feet, so I'm going to bunt a couple. So let's all take about a step back. That's good enough right there. All right, now the first thing I'm going to show you is the bat at the top of the strike zone. Anything above the top of the strike zone, I'm going to take. My bat's right here. That's a ball. The ball was right here. The bat was right here, top of the strike zone. So that's a ball. It should be a ball. And if it isn't, the coach is going to argue with the umpire. Because some umpires make mistakes, but most of them do a real good job. Now, the next thing, I'm going to bunt the ball down the third base line. See me watch the ball? That ball was up too. Watch the ball all the way down. Let the ball come to the bat. Don't go to the ball. Let the ball come to the bat. Right like that. Now right back to the pitcher. See those are the high pitches. Throw them down a little more. You got a wild pitcher out there. Now see, it's a lot easier, and it's the only way to be up and go down. Now this is the wrong way. You cannot bunt like this. If you're down like this and you bunt, see it's gonna pop up. It's gotta pop up. If you're down like this and come up, it's gonna pop up or you're gonna miss it. So bend your knees if the ball is down. Now, if it's a low pitch, I'm going to go down and go down. I bend my knees and I went right down with it. And that's how easy it is. See, watch. Watch the ball. Don't worry about running. Worry about getting the ball down. Everybody understand that? Any questions on that? And I'll do it the other way now. I can do it this way, too. That's the pivot. That's, that's moving my feet, stepping. Just like that. One more down at the first base. That's, all, that's how easy it is. And you'll be surprised how hard this is to do. OK, Bobby, let's see you do a couple. Here, you got to put this helmet on now. When you're hitting or bunting, you always must have a helmet on. That's a rule, and it's a good rule. Just watch the ball now. Back up, it's back up a step, back up a step, back up a step, back up a step. OK, get your position up high, that's it. That's perfect. That, ball was a, that was a bad pitch. All right, now bunt the ball where you see it. See the ball. Watch the ball all the way to the back. Perfect. Good job. How about one down to first? Perfect. One more. That's pretty good form, buddy. You belong to big wigs. That's good. You're a good bunter. Let's see your hat. Always bat with a hat on. It's mandatory. It's important. Shannon, I think you can bunt. Let's see you put this hat on. OK, just watch the, watch the ball now. Get your stance. Remember everything we just told Bobby, OK? Get back in the box. Back, back up. That's good. Now back up. All right, now watch the ball. Just turn. Turn. All right, watch the ball. Let the ball come to the bat. Let the ball come to the bat. Turn. That's too high. That's too high. That's OK. We got a wild pitcher out there. Let the ball come to the bat. Turn. That's good. All right, now we'll get the bat a little further out. Get the bat a little further out. Here, let me show you. Stand right here real quick. You're right here. Stand right here. Stand right there. Here's what you're doing. You're going like this. Don't go like that. See how the bat's going forward? I won't let the ball hit you. Watch the ball. Watch the ball, see? Down the third base. Watch the ball hit the bat. See, let the ball come to the bat. Just be very gentle with your hands. Just let the ball come to the bat, OK? Now, when I say turn, you turn. Watch the ball now. Turn. Right, get your hand out. See your hands. See it. That's what happens when you hit, your hands are too far out and you hit your finger. You got to have your hands right here. You got to have all this is, is bunting surface or hitting surface, OK? So let your hand come right about. That's it, perfect. Now turn, all right, turn. That's it, good. One more. Down to third. That's good. He almost swung at that one now. Get the bat out in front. Bend your knees. Go get it. Perfect. That's good. Perfect. Once again, as far as Bunny's concerned, we saw Bobby do it the right way. Shannon did not do it the right way at the beginning, because I think her pigtails bothered her over her helmet. And I think she started concentrating. And she did it the right way as soon as we had a little lesson with her. So you can do it, and you will be surprised how many games your team will win if you're a successful sacrifice bunny team. That's winning baseball. I think an important thing to realize about base running is you don't have to be a base stealer to be a good base runner. I am not a base stealer. I am not a Vince Coleman, Ricky Henderson type of base stealer. Uh, but I feel I'm a good base runner because I run very aggressively on the bases. And I steal my bases on the outfield, the outfielder's arms more than I do the catchers. And why? Because I leave first thinking about third, not just settling for second. And that's the way you have to approach base running. Get the kind of lead that you're 
uh, capable of getting over here. If you're a base stealer, you're going to get a bigger lead than the, the average runner. And get whatever they'll take you, or get whatever they'll give you, plus some. In this game, anytime someone gives you something, take that and try to get more. Now, there's different ways of going back into the bag. First of all, uh, there's different leads. Like if you're, if you're playing in a baseball game and you're behind in the game, you don't want to get picked off. So you get a safe lead. A safe lead is something right out about here where if the pitcher throws back, you just back in there safe. They're not going to pick you off. Now, if you're a base stealer, you're probably going to get a lead out here. And there's different ways of going back into the base. One way might be like this, back in like that. Or another way, and probably the quickest way, is a big lead right here. It's one step and back in there like that. And you usually get your pitcher in the paper when you do that. You ever see a guy slide head first? He always gets his pitcher in the paper. He gets a dirty uniform and everything. That's the way to do it. That's different ways of, of, of running bases. But there again, which is awful important in this, know your situation. Never get doubled off first base on a line drive with no outs. Never get doubled off first base with no outs. One out, you're trying to get to third base on a base hit. Two outs, you don't get thrown out of third base on a base hit. No outs, you don't get thrown out of third base on a no outs. Never get thrown out of third base with no outs or to end the inning. It's bad baseball. It's losing baseball. And we're not here to try to tell you how to play losing baseball. Is there any questions about this? It's very simple. It's more staying within yourself knowing what you can do and what you can't do. Some of us can steal bases and some of us can't. So the guys who steal bases, you can help your team by stealing bases. But if you're not a good base stealer and you try to steal bases, you can hurt your team. So know what you can do and go about it in the right way. Yes, sir. Why do you think about going to third when you're on first base? Well, because if I'm on first base and a guy gets a base hit, I know I can get second, but I got to be thinking about getting third. I got to be thinking about getting third. It's just like if I'm on first and a guy hits a double, that means I got to be on third. I got to be thinking about home. And if a guy gets a base hit and I just lumber into second base, I'm not even thinking about going to third. Because the, 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 the base you're thinking about, Derek, is home plate. The faster you get here, the faster you can get the home plate. That's where you score the runs. You don't get to score a run by touching this bag, or you don't get to score a run by touching that bag. So you got to think, you got to be aggressive. You got to be aggressive, and if you become an aggressive base runner, it puts pressure on the outfielders because they start overcharging the ball and they start missing the ball and they start playing bad hops when there's rough outfields and, and wet astroturfs and things like that. And if you can create airless errors in the outfield because you're aggressive, and they don't know if you're aggressive or not, and they'll know if you're not aggressive. And if they're not aggressive, they'll just come walking in like this, get down and field the ball. But if you're aggressive, they'll come running in there and trying to shovel it and trying to get rid of it fast they possibly can. So you can create a lot of good things for your baseball team just by being an aggressive base runner or just by being known as an aggressive player. It'd be amazing how many times you'll take an extra base when you don't think you can take an extra base. The element of surprise is big in baseball because we got some outfielders here. It's hard to be out in that right field and make, make a perfect throw to third base. Or it's hard to be in center field and make a perfect throw to home plate. And anytime it takes a perfect throw to throw you out, gone. You're gone. You got to make that guy make the perfect throw. And if he makes the perfect throw, take your hat off to him. He made a good throw and got you out. Next inning, he starts immediately. Simple as that. Our next segment is fielding. And it doesn't matter if you're playing first base, second base, shortstop, or third base. It's very similar. Uh, the most important thing, once again, is getting a stance that feels comfortable to you. There's different stances you can use. You can have your hands on your knees, you can have your hands down, you can bend your knees, you can stand up, whatever is comfortable to you. Uh, one important thing is stay on the balls of your feet at all times. Always think that ball is going to be hit to you. Always be trying to come in on the ball and play the ball, and always try to be getting set up so you can throw the ball. It's a little less at first base because you don't throw quite as much here as you do the other positions. But keep that bucket down, eyes on the ball, glove out in front, not back here. Keep the glove out in front, and always be moving. I'm going to show you how to, just to catch some ground balls. And try to catch them with two hands. It's like this. Just get over like this, follow the ball all the way in. I'm ready to throw the ball. Everyone see that? Very simple. Just watch the ball. It's amazing what you can do if you watch the ball. Just watch the ball, two hands. Every once in a while now, at first base or shortstop, second base or third base, you might have to catch it with one hand if it's too far over. So I have to catch a ball like this. But I'm still watching the ball. Now I have to really do some spinning to get in order to throw, get in position to throw. 
Same way if you're going to backhand the ball. Sometimes you can't get in front of a ball, so you have to, you have to, you have to try to backhand the ball. But I'm in position to throw. Watch my feet. I'm not going to go like this. Just like in base round, I'm not going to go like this. I'm going to go like this. If I'm going this way, I'm not going to go like this. I'm going to go. That's the difference. Now watch the backhand. Just like that. Ball takes a bad hop. If you watch it, you can get the guy out. Everybody got that now? Tail down, glove out, and always be moving forward. Trying to get that right at me. Trying to get that, trying to get that rhythm. See that ball come up? If I wasn't watching that ball, it would have hit me right in the chest. Watch the ball. It's not astroturf. It might take a bad hop. See, just watch the ball and then just ready, ready to throw. Now I'm going to show you how at first base. The only time you usually throw the ball at first base is when the pitcher's covering. And it takes some time. It takes some timing between the first baseman and the pitcher. Bobby, be my pitcher. OK, go. Go ahead, Bobby. Watch. Take the ball, throw it high, and step right toward him. Look at me. Look at me. Give me the ball again. One more time. Watch how I give him a good look at the ball. I catch the ball, go. I step forward, and I go like that, throw it high. Look how I'm just I'm, I'm shoving it right to him. The wrong way. Go ahead. Here's the wrong way. Don't hide the ball from your fielder. Go. See, don't hide the ball, because you can't do it. He can't see the ball. Let him see it. Let him see it. Follow him right into the glove. Now, if you're a lot deeper than that, one more. It's, a, it's much easier if you throw it up high. Now, you see, he stops because there might be a guy on second going around third. So if any of these are pitchers, remember that. One more. Throw it up high. Get over there. Get your feet planted. Step right towards him. You see that ball OK? OK. Good. That's fielding the ground ball is at first base, second base, shortstop, or third base. Now we're going to go over covering the bag. And I think something very important about this is if you're a first baseman, don't play so deep where if a ball is hit hard to the third baseman or hard to the shortstop, you can't get to first base. Don't overplay your speed as far as first base is concerned. Now, covering first base, here's what I recommend. And, and I, I might add before I get started, the first base is one of the, maybe the only position outside a catcher where you use one-handed. It's OK to catch one hand because it's a lot easier. Because in most throws from the infield, your other hand will get in the way if you start sticking out. Because you can't stretch as far two-handed as you can one-handed. So don't worry about catching the ball at first base with one hand. Matter of fact, I recommend it. And here's the way I do it. Hold it now. I have my feet on each corner, my feet. Where if a ball's over here, I just dance. If a ball's right over here, I just dance. If a ball's straight ahead, I go like this. Now, another important thing about your feet work, your footwork. See my foot right here? I don't want my foot like this. Why? Because if I stretch, watch my foot. If I stretch, is my foot on the bag? OK, so I want my ball on my foot right there. Now, if I stretch out for that throw, my foot's still on the bag. And there's no sense in a guy making a great play and being safe because you're off the bag. Now, watch the way I go to the ball. And I go to the ball. Just go right to the ball. One-handed, just like that. Go follow the ball. Just go, go right to the ball. See, and you get in the habit of just stepping right towards the ball. Just if it's a high throw, if it's a high throw and you have to go back and you're like this, now you just got to go like this. But you got to get out of the way of that runner. So you don't want your foot here because you get your ankle tore up. Get your foot right here. Let's see a high throw. See, now look, see I'm out of the way, but I'm still on the bag and I'm not going to get spiked. Everybody understand that? Very simple. Anywhere. See, just a little footwork. I'm out of his way. Don't have to stretch. If it's going to be a close play and it's down, I just, just like that, and the guy's out. Everyone understand that? You sure? Give me one short hop. You got to watch the ball now. That's a long hop. These are tough because you got to really watch the ball. See, you got to watch the ball as, as much as you possibly can, and it's hard to stretch on a short hop, a backhand short hop. Just, now uh, you got to watch the ball, see? It doesn't matter where the ball is at. See, that ball came up. That's the one when you get hurt over here. Anywhere, right here. Just go right after the throw. And that guy's out. OK, Jeff, let's we'll see you take a couple. Come on now. Get ready. Throw the ball anywhere to him. That a boy. Stretch out now. You got long arms and long legs. Stretch out. And I can tell you right now, 
Look, I can tell you right now, you're standing wrong because you're like this. That's the way you were. And how are you gonna, how are you gonna tag the bag if you have to stretch out like this? You're gonna be off the bag. I just told you, get your foot right there. It's gotta feel comfortable. Go ahead. It's gotta feel a lot, a lot taller. Come on, put something into it, let's go. Get ready, now stretch out there. Come on, use those arms. You should have caught that ball right here. You could have caught that ball right here instead of here. That's that much more you're gonna get the guy out by. Reach out there. Go get it. That a boy. All right, move him around. One over this side. Go get it, move around. Move those feet. All right, move on the side of the runner. Go get it. That a boy. Let's see him pick a short hop. Watch the ball. Watch the ball. That a boy. All right, one high one. Go back now, get out of the way, get out of the way. All right, all right, it's a nice try. You couldn't do nothing about that. See, if the throw gets you off the bag, you can't do anything about it, but you did the right thing. What was that? You, stay here. You caught the ball. Don't let the ball go over your head because you can't get the guy out. Just high, high. <clears throat> You're going to be like this, and the guy th throws it high. If you can't, there's no sense of staying on the bag and letting the ball go over your head because now the guy's on second. Everyone understand that? Sometimes you got to give the guy the base to keep him from getting an extra base. Take a couple more. Watch that ball now. Get involved with it. Have fun with it. Hey, this is fun. This is the only thing more fun than this is going to school. Let's go. Get out there. That a boy. All right, one more. Throw him a hard, throw him a hard one. One more. Throw him a hard one. I want you to go straight out and get it. Watch the ball. Straight out there. Go get it. Hard stretch. That a boy. That's first base, and it's simple to play. All you got to do is put a little dedication and hard work into it, and you'll win the baseball game. That's what we're all out here for. Teach everybody how to win the baseball game. The next thing we're going to talk about is one of the most important phases of the game of baseball. It's a double play. It's pitcher's best friend. It takes you out of so many innings as a defensive team. And there's different ways of making a double play. First, I'm going to show you a second baseman's pivot at second base as far as making a double play. Uh, you, one thing you should remember if you're playing on that side of the field, the most, the, the most important thing about making a double play is getting the first out. You must get one before you can get two. In other words, make a good throw from that side of the field if you're playing short or third base. If you're on this side of the field, make a good throw from first or second to the shortstop to get a double play. And it, it amazes you how many times you'll win games because of a double play. Pitchers love double plays because all teams that win pennants or win Little League championships or win college championships or high school championships are strong up the middle. And when they say you're strong up the middle, it means you got a good catcher, a good double play combination, and a good center fielder. That's defense. And defense wins a lot of games for you. So I'm going to show you some different ways. Just back up a half a step. I'm going to show you some different ways. Now, the thing you're going to try to watch here is my feet, because I'm going to tag the bag about three or four different ways. Now, one, one way is just to drag across. You come across like this. I barely hit the bag, but I hit it. Everybody watching my feet? That was one way. Just dragging. I dragged my, I do it in slow motion. Hold my right foot, just right across, and throw. And that way you're out, of the, you're out of the way of the base runner. The second way is touching with my left foot on top of the bag and getting across the bag and getting out of the way of the runner. Touch and gone. Um, that's two ways. That's two different ways. The third way is when you got a lot of time, you get like this, you push off that foot in your back and you got to throw underhand, you throw like that. Now you see that? I, I hit the bag right here like this, got the throw and got out of his way. The base runner might have slid this way. Now, the way you do it when you got a lot of time where a ball is hitting the hole, it's short, and you beat the throw, you're standing like this, you're straddling the bag, and you take the throw, and you, you just got to go like this. And you got to get out of the way because the guy's going to slide. I'm straddling the bag like this. I'm waiting for the throw. I take the throw. I throw, and I get out of the way because the guy's going to be sliding. That's the most difficult one. I'm straddling the bag. There it is. Back it like that, and I got to throw like that. All right? Now, if, I, if I'm up here like this, and the throw is over here, I just drag my foot and I'm ready to throw. It's simple. It's all footwork, but you got to practice it. Okay, I told you people or showed you people how to turn a double play as a second baseman. I want someone to show me. Dalton be my second baseman. Now, don't forget there's four different ways you can tag. Got to make sure we're getting one before we worry about getting two. Okay? All right. Go ahead. Turn it. Okay, go ahead. Now, the first thing, exactly. The first thing you did wrong is exactly what I said the first time I talked here. Catch the ball with two hands. Here's what you did. I caught the ball, all right? It's just as easy for that same throw 
to catch a ball right here, and you're ready to throw to first, just like that, all in one motion, okay? Give me the ball. Two hands. Catch the ball with two hands. Go on with it. Go on with it. Atta boy. All right, that was good. You just bobbled a little bit, but that's all right. You got the out, and you had a chance at first if you got a slow runner. One more time. Catch the ball. Go. Atta boy. Perfect. That's better. Hey, you threw it too hard for him. That's good. One more. Give me this one right here. Ball's in the, maybe the short, the ball's hit hard and the shortstop dropped the ball. And we're already here waiting, so we gotta go like this, catch the ball, boom, bam! It's like that, all right? You got that? Hit the bag, hold it, hit the bag with your left foot, catch the ball and throw it like that. And if you throw it like that, that runner will slide. You're not trying to hurt him, just trying to make him slide so he can't hit you. Get there. Stop. What'd you do wrong? What'd you do wrong? One hand. All right, don't catch it with one hand. Okay. That's why you got two hands. Get there. Wait till he gets there. Get there. Atta boy. You use your belly that time. You see him use his belly? All right, one more time. Catch the ball now. That's perfect. That's better. That's, feel good throwing that ball? Yeah. Okay, that's the right way of doing it. Give me some skin. Dalton, we just got through working around second base, and now because of instant replay and slow-mo, we're going to be able to watch the whole sequence, the good and the bad. Remember the first play? Look right here. See how you dropped that ball? You reached for one hand. I told you when we were at first base, the first base is the only position you use one hand. So you got to use two hands. You got to catch that ball at second base because the first out is the important out in a double play. Now, remember I told you when you approach the bag, don't overrun the bag because you got to keep your momentum going towards first where you're throwing the ball. Now, look when you made those adjustments, how you caught the ball with two hands, you were going towards first, you got something on the throw, and you completed the double play. It's amazing that you can make that quick of an adjustment that fast of time. Okay, I showed you how to make a double play as a second baseman. Now I'm going to show you, as a second baseman, how to make a throw to a shortstop. Now don't forget, the first throw is the most important throw in a double play. You got to get the man at second before you can get the man at first. Okay? Now I'm going to uh, have some ground balls here at second. I'm going to throw it to short. Bobby can be my shortstop. Okay. Go on with it. Underhand, step right towards him. Give him a good look at the ball. Everybody see that? That's one way. The second way, just turning, throwing right there. Don't even move my feet. I just pivoted my hips, just like this. Everyone see that? The next way, and this is the way when you got to be a little closer. You can't do it this way if you're too far away. This is this flip right here. Now watch. Just right there like that. See that ball all right, Bobby? Now, the next way is when I got to go way over my left, like this. Catch the ball, cross over, step up right there like that. Look at my action. Catch the ball, cross over, throw like that. Let him see the ball. Pitcher's best friend to double play. Any questions on that? Good job, fellas. All right, we've been at first base, we've been at second base, and now we're at third base, the hot corner. There's just a couple things about playing third base I think are important. One is it's a reaction position. You don't have a lot of time to think. But you do have a lot more time to throw the ball to first than you realize, because the ball gets to you so fast. I think a third baseman has to com communicate with a shortstop a lot. What I mean by that is know where the shortstop is playing and take anything you can get going that way, because the throw is shorter for you going over, cutting in front of the, the shortstop. And it's easier for you, because your momentum is going towards first base, where a shortstop's momentum is coming in towards home. You understand what I'm saying? If I'm playing right here and I'm going for a chopper over there, it's easier for me to field the ball and throw the guy out of first than it is for the shortstop to come in. So take anything you can going that way, or take everything you possibly can. You have to know the hitters. If you got guys that can bunt and run, you don't play behind the bag. Move up, take the bunt away from them. Move up in front of the bag, make them hit the ball by you. And if they hit the ball by you, then you back up. It's as simple as that. Late in the ball game, eighth and ninth inning, a scoreless or a tie, we put the third baseman right on the line where nothing can get to the right of the third baseman that's fair ball. And all we're doing there is we're eliminating a double. We want to try to hold a guy to a single, and 99 out of 100 times, if a ball is hit to the left of the third baseman, the left fielder is going to come in and get it before the guy gets a second. You don't want that winning run to get to second base late in the ball game. I'm talking about the eighth or ninth inning. There's not a lot of thinking to do at third base. It's mostly reaction. Uh, although you have to know your runners, which one can bunt, which one can't bunt, which one can run, which one can't run. 
it gets back to what I talked about very early, about knowing the hitters, knowing who the big hitters are, who the pull hitters are, who the guys that can't run. Another thing about third base, a third baseman takes charge on pop-ups in there. It's a lot easier for a third baseman to go in this area and catch a pop-up instead of having a sh catcher come all the way out and catch it. Because most pop-ups that go up are going to blow this way. And it's, the ball's coming to a third baseman or a first baseman if, if it's on that side of the field. So don't be shy. Take charge. And uh, pop-ups back in here, your shortstop will call you off of. Pop-ups back in there, the left fielder will call the shortstop off of. It's simple. We all got a job to do, and we have to know what part of the deal is our job and what part isn't. Most of the plays at third base are easy because you just have a reaction. You just have to move your hands. Uh, third base is not the position that you really can overcharge the ball because you don't have time because the ball gets to you before you realize it. Although there is one ball, and that's a swinging bunt or just a normal bunt, uh, where it's a tough play to decide whether to use the glove or whether to use the bare hand. Uh, if the ball is, is, is a little bit too hard, you can't use the bare hand. The bare hand is for a ball that's almost stopped or nearly stopped. And if the ball is a little firmly or hit, you got to use the glove. And I'm going to show you uh, that play because I think that's really the hardest play at third base. It's coming in. It's overcharging the ball. You really have to be aggressive as far as uh, knowing how to catch the ball and how to get rid of it. Brooks Robinson was probably the best any of us ever watched as far as making this play. And uh, he come in and got the ball and got rid of the ball in one motion. Now, I'm going to show you the different uh, ways. Now, I'm playing even with the bag now because I got a guy that's a pretty good bunter up there, and I can't give him a base hit. If I'm back here, I'd be giving him a base hit. You don't, uh, what we learned earlier, we don't give anybody anything in this game, right? Right. 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 Now, first, it's just sort of a hard hit ball. Like, come in, and you throw, you catch it like this, and you got plenty of time to straighten up and throw. Everybody see that? I use two hands. I'm down. I'm down low. Same thing. I'm down low. I'm getting, in, I'm getting in position to throw. I'm trying to get my feet ready to throw because you're going to have to come up. You're going to have to make a strong throw. It's a long way over the first base. This one's a little easier, and I can bare hand this one. Come in like this. Come up like that. Throw it right over there like that. Everybody see that? Is that funny? What was funny about that? Almost hit the bag. Watch it again. Right off my foot here. Just like that. Everybody see that? I'm going to test somebody to see if you can do this now. Because you all look like it's so easy to do. One more. Do it faster. That's even faster. Get over to first base. I can make it. One more time. Slow bunt. Barehanded. Out. OK, Kelly. Can you do that? First of all, get ready. Get your stance. Wait a minute now, wait a minute. Be going to get on the balls of your feet. Okay. Be ready to go in and catch the ball. All right, go get it. Catch the ball. Catch the ball. Hey, come on back. We gotta catch the ball first. Okay. We gotta catch the Who ball first. Throw it to? Just throw it to, 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 toward first base. Get ready. Spread out a little bit. Get, get relaxed. Be on the balls of your feet. That's it. Catch the ball. Hey. Hey. Two hands. Okay. Two hands. Okay. Give me this hat. I hold his hat. We're going to catch this ball with two hands. Two hands. Go get it. That's it. Now, that's perfect. All right. All right, now this is going to be much slower. Now, you go in and you bare hand this ball. You got to really work at this. Go ahead. That's it. Good. One more time. Now, overcharge this one. Run hard. Go get it. That's it. That was too hard to bare hand. Easy. Really charge this one now. Go get it. Bare hand it. Perfect. That's good. Good job. Third base is not that tough to play. And there's a little girl. Look how big she is. And she just went in and made that bare hand play. I've seen big leaguers can't make that play. Because she was concentrating. She was worrying about what she was doing. She was trying to do it the right way. And she did it. OK, that's it at third base. Next stop, where all the ball hawkers are, the outfield. That's a lot of fun out there, too. So let's get started at the outfield. Now, personally, when I played the outfield, and I played the outfield for like eight or nine years, something like that, I like to stand like this with my hands on my knees, on the balls of my feet. It's very important to be comfortable. Everything you do, is, is you got to be comfortable, whether you're hitting a ball or catching a ball. So you can stand like this, or you can stand like this, or you can stand like this, whichever is comfortable for you. Whichever is comfortable for you. And you got to be thinking that the ball is going to be hit to you every time it's thrown by the pitcher. Because uh, you can't be out in the outfield worrying about the ball coming to you, because you can't hide from that white rat. 
That's what we call that baseball, a white rat. And you try hiding from it, it's gonna follow you right to wherever you go. You want that ball hit to you. You want that ball hit to you. So we got our stances, uh, whichever is comfortable to you. I can't tell you because some of our legs are longer than others, some of us weigh others more than others, some of us are taller than others, so we're gonna stand differently. Everyone understand that? It's very important to be comfortable in anything we do. Now, I would highly recommend anytime you're trying to catch a fly ball, try to use two hands. There's a lot of times when you're stretching out, you can't use two hands. But most of the time, you camp under a fly ball or a line drive, you can use two hands. And you got less chance. I know you see a lot of big leaguers use one hand. But don't forget, they're big leaguers. And you see big leaguers drop balls using one hand. You see big leaguers drop balls using two hands. So it's common sense. It's got to be a lot easier to catch a ball with two hands. Does everybody understand that? I mean, just two hands. It's very simple. Uh, I think the important thing to remember about being in the outfield is stay off your heels. Never be on your heels, whether you're in this position or this position or this position. Stay off your heels because you can't get a jump on the ball. It's just like uh, anything, be on the balls of your feet, just like this, anticipating the ball, ready to go forward. Because most of the time, if a ball is hit over your head, it's going out of the ballpark for a home run. You can't catch it anyway. And here's my position right here. Now, watch the way I camp up to catch the ball. Here's the ball going back. I'm going to try to catch it right here. Not here. I'm going to try to catch it right up here. And that way I can come right back and in position to throw. Try to catch the ball as close to where you're going to throw the ball as you possibly can. Watch it again. I'm moving back. Now I'm going forward. It's all one motion. I'm ready to throw. Here's the wrong way. I didn't go back like this. And I didn't catch the ball like that. I didn't do it like that because I can't throw. If you can get back and be coming forward when you catch the ball, you're going to be able to throw the ball. Uh, with more accuracy, and you're going to be able to get more on your arm when you throw the ball. One more time. Get back and come forward. Get, get your momentum coming forward and you throw the ball. Sometimes you can't, though. One more time. Now, this is one I can't get back. I have to use, like, one hand. See, so I, just, I have to catch the ball. You have to catch the ball. Now, that would have been awkward to catch with two hands like that. So I just catch with one hand. Now, the ground balls. There's different ways of approaching fielding ground balls. Uh, the first way I'll show you is with nobody on and a base hit hit to like you in center field or you in left field or you in right field. Um, here's the right way of doing this. A ground ball. I need a ground ball. I'm going to come in. I'm going to block the ball. I'm going to be down on my knees. I'm going to block the ball. I'm going to block the ball just like this. Not like this. I'm going to keep the ball right in front of me because if the ball comes up, it takes a bad hop, it's still in front of me. The guy can't advance another base. One more time. I'll let this one hit me. See? That's wrong. That's the wrong way. The one thing important about this, uh, this part of the field is keep the glove out in front. Keep the glove out in front. You come in, keep the ball right in front of you like that. I watch the ball all the way in. And you got to get up fast now. You don't sit down on your knee and stay there. You got to get up fast because the guy's running. This is with nobody on. One more time. Just come in, watch the ball. Come up and throw it. Everybody understand that? That's with nobody on base. You're just playing it safe is what you're doing is you're keeping the ball from getting by you. You're, and you're anticipating a bad hop. Hits you here, or hits you here, or hits you here, it's no problem. Just go pick it up, relax. Don't press the panic button, just because you dropped the ball. So Dalton wants you to get out here and take a couple ground balls. First, uh, let's just take the, the base hit, nobody on, and making sure the ball don't get by you, OK? That's the first thing we're going to do here now. You, you other youngsters watching, any questions? Just Now, this is he's, he's going to get forward as fast as he can and get down, block the ball. All right, come on back. Get back an extra step. Come on forward and block the ball now. Block the ball. Go ahead. To get down. That's it. Just play it safe. Come up throwing. Make a good throw into the second baseman. Uh, into the shortstop or into the second baseman. That's good. OK, he's doing pretty good. All right, now this is with a man on base. And he's got to really be aggressive and charge the ball and try to throw the guy out, whether it's at third or whether it's at home. So you've got to give him a couple extra steps. Now, don't forget, now, you, you charge the ball hard until you get almost to the ball, and then you slow up to get your momentum and get your rhythm, okay? okay. So come on with it. Go get it. Perfect. a boy. How'd that feel? I don't feel really comfortable when I come up and then the crow hop. Yeah? I can't really. It's not very comfortable. Well, you probably never did it before. See? Uh, let me see the way you would do it. You do it the way you would do it. Yeah. Let's see what you do. See, but you're not getting anything behind your throw there. See, let me tell you what you did right here. Here's what you did. Here's all you had left with when you threw. You, you caught the ball, like I said, and you, and you threw you threw like that. How are you going to throw anybody? Get power off your 
That's what the crow hop does. See, the crow hop gives you that little extra, extra step right here. Boom, your momentum's coming forward. See, and you really can throw the ball because your momentum is carrying you forward. That's why you can get a lot on the throw. Yeah. See, you, 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 uh, you threw the ball like you were a second baseman or a shortstop and you just caught the ball. You just got to throw it across the infield. I'm talking about outfield now. We're 300 feet from home plate or 300 feet from third base. So we have to get something behind it. So let's see it again. You do a couple more times, you'll get the rhythm. It's all rhythm. Get that rhythm. Go get it. Atta boy. That's, uh, that's a little better. You, you, you could have took another half a step. Another half a step. Go get it. Catch the ball. Atta boy. That was perfect. How'd that feel? Yeah. If you, if you pick up the right habits, you got a better chance of winning the game. And that's what we're out here for, to teach everybody how to win. Winning is important. If you're going to come out here and play for two and a half hours, you might as well try to help your ball club win. Because it's a lot easier, or it's a lot more fun to ride in the parades instead of standing on the side and watching the parades. And if you win, you get to go to the parades. Mm -hmm.